The Top Not Creative Show, The Top Not Creative Show, seeking super smart, super talented superheroes, how to be wow over the world and all around, The Top Not Creative Show, The Top Not Creative Show. Hello everyone, this is Shantae Schrader and welcome to the show where we seek out the super smart, super talented, and basically the superheroes who are taking over the world and making it super wow. And today we're talking with, in, in my idea, a, a super genius, Carl Kozak. He is the inventor and CEO of Trackline.com. And Trackline.com, um, well Trackline, the belt, is it's a, this incredible system of, of a belt and we'll have Carl talk about it because clearly I can't speak to it with any kind of genius um, where it's a belt without holes. Instead, it's a clever, more effective track system that creates the perfect fit every time. Guys love them and trust me, I think girls love them too um, because it means that they won't have to keep buying belts for their men. Now, Carl, he lives in beautiful San Diego with his wife and children. He graduated from San Diego State University with a bachelor's in economics. And over the last 20 years, he successfully launched, grown, managed, and sold several companies. Um, and without further ado, we're just we're going to bring Carl on. Uh, Carl, thank you for joining us. We're so excited to hear more about you. Thanks for having me. I don't know if I've ever been introduced with the word super genius before, but I'll, I'll tell my wife that that was said about me today. Oh, yes. Yes, I will per, put a, a stamp on that. <laughs> Honey, I'm a super genius, right? <laughs> exactly. I mean, I'm sorry. This is genius. The track claim belt, um, I told you just, just a couple minutes ago, I have five brothers, and... I can't tell you um, how many belts we've bought over the years and how many times we've had to throw out belts and you can't repurpose them, you know, and you make holes in them that end up tearing and just don't look very good. So first... Yeah, you do. You want to make a hole in between the other holes because uh -huh. their belts are just five, you know, five holes an inch apart. And whose waist, you know, all of our waist sizes tend to fluctuate on a daily or weekly basis. But whose waist size fluctuates an inch at a time, you know? So, <laughs> right? It's just so, so the track belt made a lot of sense. But I can't take full credit for the super geniusness because track belts, um, unbeknownst to a lot of us, have been around for quite some time in another form in Asia. Okay. You know, they've been in Asia for a while, the track on the back. Just the buckle wasn't right for the American market, and we redesigned the buckle entirely. So that's kind of what we did. I, I looked at the buckle and thought, and the whole system, and said, oh, I like the track. I like this. Uh, it moves at a quarter of an inch, roughly, you know, mm -hmm. when you adjust. So I said, that's great, but the buckle is kind of hideous, and it's over belts, and it's just really bulky, and I don't think a lot of people would really care for it. So I said, let me, I have a partner in China who's an American living there, and I said, let me take this and redesign it and rework it so it's palatable for the American market. Okay, what I love about that is, um, well, of course, someone's had the idea. I mean, that's usually the case, right? <laughs> but here's the thing. Most of us just will buy a belt and not think. I mean, we'll get frustrated, be like, oh, why can't this be different? But not think beyond that. So right. you, you were able to bridge that gap between, you know, people are like, well, this just is the way it is here in America. Seeing the need and then making it fit for, you know, the social kind of what we, we were looking for. So um, maybe explore what it was that when this idea came about and what led to launching it on Kickstarter. Well, my wife had given me a belt, um, my birthday, and, it, and I did, you know, what you just described earlier, I was trying to put an extra hole in it because it just, whatever, whatever reason, I was frustrated and it wasn't fitting right. And so I kind of ruined the belt because I tried to add a couple holes and then it looked like it looked terrible. Because you add holes, they tend to stretch, and you, I don't know, the leather wasn't very good on this particular belt, I guess, even though it was expensive. So I just got frustrated, and I ruined the belt, and my wife was upset about it. So I was complaining to a friend, because um, I'd made some things in China before. An American, like I said, an American friend of mine that lives in China, that's from San Diego, and she was saying, well, you should try this kind of belt we have. And he ended up coming over a month or two later and showing me the belt. And that's when I, I realized that it was an interesting concept, but it just needed to be redesigned for the American market. You know, it needed style to it. 
and it, it needed the functionality, but it needed some more style and some pizzazz. And then we added the, you know, looked for a marketing app, and then that's when we kind of came across Kickstarter. And what was it when you, was that the first time you'd seen Kickstarter, or were you familiar with it? I was not, I was only familiar, like most people, I'd looked at it once or twice. I'd never really backed anything before, but I had just looked at it and thought, oh, this is interesting. I wish I had this uh, tool uh, when I was starting other companies. You know, earlier on in my career, I, I had some other opportunities. Um, I come from the movie business, believe it or not. Okay. And I've made, I've written and directed a couple films. So there's a lot of films on, on Kickstarter, as you've seen. Yes. I mean, usually but, that's where the power comes from, is being able to create a, a concise, targeted, you know, nice video. Right, exactly. So, because there's stories, people want to hear good stories. People mm-hmm. want to know how you got there, what what you're doing, uh, where it came from, where the inspiration was. They want to hear the story behind the idea, and um, so that's really what you know. I think helps help fuel our campaign. We had a, a good a good little story to tell. It was a small story, but still it was a story. We had a great product, and I think the product. A lot of people have asked me recently what fueled your success with Kickstarter, and it really, honestly. It's been the product. We focused on the product. We took a year or so, year and a half, just about to develop it, to, to fine tune it, and people are responding to it. They are for sure because you are, um, you're almost your 30 day. Um, on June 9th, Sunday is when you'll be at your 30 day point. You had a pledged goal of about fifteen thousand, and you're at two hundred, almost two hundred and fifty thousand. I know, that's terrific. Isn't it? We're in the top 10 already. We're in the all-time top 10 most funded. We've entered into that a, lot, a couple of days ago. So even if we quit today, we would be in the top 10. I'm, I'm hoping we'll get in the top 8 or something, but who knows? We're just going at, you know, we're, we're kind of climbing at a pretty steady uh, pace, really. It's a pretty straight graph if you look at it. So, Carl, did you think that, you know, that year and a half as you were looking into this and doing the research that you... Okay, you launch it on Kickstarter. One, you'd be launching something in fashion, the category, and that it would be as successful as it is. No, I had no idea. I mean, I, I typically I've had a good eye in the past for products. Um, I've launched some successful things in the past that were nothing to do with fashion, but just other products where I've looked at it and thought that could be something. Um, it needs some modifications. I've done that before, and so. When I saw this product, I thought, wow, okay, if we could just modify this properly and get it to a certain point uh, style-wise, this would be something I'd be, A, interested in pursuing, and B, I think it would be very popular because, you know, us, us men with belts and women too, I mean, the belt has been around since, like, I think the, you know, Roman times, and it's a strap of leather with a couple holes in it. Mm-hmm. And so it really hasn't changed much in, like, several thousand years. So I thought, well, it's a kind of a simple product, but it's an effective thing, and it's something that people would, I think, really uh, go for. Now, let's talk about, um, you know, your eye, your your background as far as knowing creatively um, things and your entrepreneurial background. You started the Internet's first travel site in 1994? Yeah, a friend of mine was, uh, believe it or not, was a close friend of mine was going to Harvard Business School at the time, and he called me in 94 and said, hey, you should check out this thing called the the information superhighway, I think he called it at the time. And I just, I, just, I took days to get on. Nobody was really on it. There was nothing on the Internet to speak of. And I launched, it's a long story, but I launched a site called Travelsource.com, which is still online. It's not much of a site these days at all. But I launched it at the time. And Yahoo had just come on about, I don't know, two or three weeks before me. Mm-hmm. And they put a search engine. They didn't have that capability. It was just a directory. And they only had five or six categories Believe it or not, one was travel. When you clicked on travel, I was the only thing for travel. The only commercial site for travel. That's amazing. <laughs> Hard to believe in 1994. So, uh, yeah, I've been on the Internet for a little while and had some experience with it. Although I'm not really a techie. I, I tend to bridge the gap between the technical and the and more of the creative side. No, I, I do like that you have these creative insights, but then you know how to apply action to that. Maybe for some of our listeners who feel like, I have great ideas, um, talk to them about what what you, if you have a process or if you just are just action-oriented, what that looks like for you. Well, um, I tend to charge ahead a little fast. So I, my wife is kind of my, um, I know she balances me out and tells, tells me to, just take it easy, go a little slower, think these through a little more, because I'm really bad about that. When I was a kid, I always tell people I, 
my parents came home one day and I was trying to build a sailing ship in the backyard, like a full size <laughs> vessel and all these boards. I was like 12 or something. My parents were like, what the heck are you doing? So I tend to like charge ahead without really thinking things through all the time because I'm a very action oriented person. I get excited about something. I want to get it out there. But with Kickstarter and this product and everything, I really, with this particular product, I really kind of took a couple steps back and wanted to get it right. And, you know, it's, it's really a process and it really takes a lot of effort to launch a good Kickstarter program because you've really got to cover all the bases. I mean, there's, there's the different rewards. There's just all the different questions people need to have answered and all the different angles. And this is a relatively simple product. So I can't imagine if you had something that was really more complex, Mm -hmm. you know. So I did, my wife bought me a book, uh, one of the Kickstarter books, um, how to and, you know, how to be successful. And and I read that pretty thoroughly. And I I studied several of the other uh, highly funded projects online and just made notes of what they covered and what types of things they touched on. And what set them apart from the others? And what were some of those things that you found? Well, I think, you know, having, I think the key for me was the product. And I thought, you know, there's a lot of things I see on Kickstarter that just don't do very well. And I thought, well, I think that the video is decent and the story is okay, but they just don't have the right product. And, and unfortunately, that's at the core of everything. You can kind of sugarcoat some stuff, but you have to have a, a decent or, a, you know, an above average product to get an above average result. But there are those who have really um, slick-looking videos that tell a really good story, and they're able, I think, to rise above what they might have done without that, you know? Okay. Um, so I think, I think that's important, and I think, you know, instilling certain things and in, in confidence in people and in your abilities to produce what you say you're going to produce is important as well, too. Now, um, let's, let's kind of go back um, through your history of building a boat in the backyard, uh, <laughs> launching the Internet's first travel site, uh, publishing a sports collectible magazine, and then directing four feature films and founding the San Diego Film Festival 10 years ago. I mean, how did you get started in film and, and all of that? Oh, my gosh. You're going back a ways. Well, I just, <laughs> you know, a lot of people, I had an affinity uh, for movies and a lot of film and movies. Um, and I just, I had good memories of, of that as a kid and, and, and different comedy films. And I know just different films I love. So, but there is a big difference between, you know, I, always, I was telling college students, I used to do some um, just speaking engagements. And there's a big difference between really enjoying films and making movies, right? Mm-hmm. There's a big gap. <laughs> uh, you have to really love being on set and you have to, you know, like the creative writing process, the editing process, because you really end up, you know, you spend a long time in, in post-production, for example. There's just certain things that I think you have to enjoy. And I, I just enjoyed that, and I ended up writing a script. And at some point after I'd done the travel, uh, the online travel company, I decided I wanted to take a leap of faith and try it on my own. So I actually sold that company, and I just self-financed the movie. That's what I did. Awesome. Yeah. Now, what is it? I mean, are you able to just see the bigger picture? I'm sorry, say again? Are you able to see the bigger picture creatively and then kind of just break it down from there? Yeah, I think, I think you know, when you think of things in their totality, it's kind of overwhelming at times, right? Right. Um, I, I just had, my wife and I just had twins six months ago. <laughs> so to use them as an example, you know, it kind of, it, it does stress you out a bit when you think about, oh my gosh, I've got twins. You know, and in addition to my other kids, I have twins to take care of. They're going to go to this. They're going to do this. They're going to go to college. Maybe they're going to, you know, all the their whole, if you see their whole life in, a, in one single moment, it seems overwhelming, right? Raising right. them. Like a lot of things, like making a movie. If you think about that, it seems overwhelming. But you just take it piece by piece, day by day. And then when you start to break it down and just concentrate on what you have to do today and the piece of the goal that you need to achieve today, it just seems much more manageable and doable. I think that's where the super genius comes in because a lot of times we can see a bigger picture, but that's the stopping point where the overwhelm sets in. So, yeah. <laughs> being able yeah, to you kind of wonder, how do, I get, how do I get from A to B sometimes? You know, it can be a little bit overwhelming if you try to take it all in. So I just tell myself, well, don't worry about all that. Just You just do your best today. You focus on today's goal and what you need to do today, right? Yes, yes. Um, Okay, so let's kind of let's talk more about trackline. Um, so ba- you have a few more days for the project to be done. It's obvious it's been funded, it's been overfunded. 
what is the next few months going to look like for you and then maybe the next couple of years with track lane? Well, believe it or not, we're, we're considering right now going over to Indiegogo, oh. the number two crowdfunding site. And it, it's only been done once or twice before, but it's a long story. We were just contacted by different people who have uh, follow-up sites, but we thought it might make sense to go over to Indiegogo and do a small, similar campaign over there just because we found that we can get a better discount on the manufacturing if we do a larger bulk quantity. Uh -huh. People are asking different styles. We'd like to do belts for women. We'd like to do some different designs, and all that's in the future. We, we see all that coming, but we'd like to do it a little quicker. And one way to do that is to raise some extra money and go over to Indiegogo. So that, that might be our next step. Okay. So does that, yeah, that, that hold production now for this, this round until you, you know what that bigger picture is? I'm sorry. I, I, I didn't hear you. What? Does that hold this round of um, you know, this project until you have that funding so that you can work with like, the bigger picture of creating more? Does that hold up the Kickstarter campaign, you mean? Yeah, yeah. No, no, it doesn't. No, no, the Kickstarter order is already, um, it's already underway, but just by adding extra materials, we can actually kind of continue on that and play on that order because it would, we would just kind of go right over into Indiegogo within a week or so. That's awesome. You know, um, and just kind of, we need some, we need some more molds to make some of the designs and these types of things that have to be paid for. Every time you do a mold, it's usually several thousand dollars. Okay. Okay. All of this kind of helps, and, and the Indiegogo order would, would be would be behind the Kickstarter order. In other words, it would be a month or two behind. Okay. You know, yeah, and we would tell people obviously that. And after that, we're probably gonna you know we're gonna be on our regular site at the standardstyle.com or trackline.com, and then uh, we'll be in retail stores as well. And do you have a plan for that when you hit retail? We do. We're gonna start. Um, Talking, to, we've already started talking to retailers, and we're going to do a retail stores very shortly this summer. And I think that's kind of where the product would do really well because I think when you go into men's stores or you know um, higher end stores, boutiques especially, and people actually show you how the belt functions, people get to try it on, uh -huh. and that's when really it hits home with people, and they really realize, oh, this is really nice. It's you know the buckle is really well made, it slides right on, and it oh, fits my right to my perfect waist size, and wow, it releases really easy, too. So when you see all that stuff working, then, uh, you know, it's that much more desirable. Love it. Now, um, if you were to give any one advice, if they're launching a Kickstarter campaign, what would be the first and second rule of thumb that you would say, here, you have to do these things first? Well, I'd say, you know, make sure your product is ready, that 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 you're ready, that you really thought through what your various um, rewards are going to be. Um, I would say, you know, make sure you've got your story where it should be. I mean, telling a story in a succinct amount of time. I've seen Kickstarter videos where people are on there for 10 minutes rambling away. Um, I've also seen other videos. Um, I pledged a brownie company recently, that, and the woman didn't want to be online. She just wasn't comfortable in front of the camera. So she just had various stills of brownies, you know? Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> like, brownies, they look delicious. They're really nice pictures of brownies. And like, she's making gourmet brownies. Okay, I don't have to hear from her. I don't have to hear her describe the chocolatey moistness of the brownie. You know, <laughs> I can see them. She looks very reputable. The, the page was very well done. Um, so she had a nice page. Other people, I've seen them just get on there and ramble about things, and they weren't very um, focused. Okay. So, you know, People only have a limited amount of time. You got to keep your. I decided my video would be less three, three minutes or less, and I and I determined I wanted to show how the product worked within the first twenty or thirty seconds. So thirty sec by thirty seconds in, you're already seeing the back of the belt. You're seeing the functionality. You're seeing how it works, right? Uh huh. When I did the first cut, it was like two minutes in. I kind of teased people. I went, well, that's not really going to work. It works in, in the movie business. You can tease people for a bit. They're sitting there watching. They'll give you that that time, but. Um, you know, in this in this arena, you need to show people quickly how it works. They need to understand. Uh, when I hand people the belt on the street, if I give somebody the belt, which I've done before, initially they look at me like, "Who is this crazy person? It's just a belt. I don't need to, I don't need to see a belt. I understand." And then they, I say, "Well, flip it over." And then they flip it over, and then they're intrigued, and then they're holding the belt and working the belt and trying it on. See, so I needed to. I I, I did a lot of test marketing, and I and I approached people. 
at coffee shops and things like that just to get response from just people that I didn't know. I didn't want to hear my friends and family pat me on the back or something. That doesn't do me any good. I wanted to hear the truth, right? Uh-huh. Well, I think that so changes. I mean, hearing, like, do your research, but also do the test marketing, whatever way that you can do that. And um, considering that your your audience is probably going to have the attention span of a goldfish, keeping to three minutes or less is probably a good idea. <laughs> Yeah, I would. And, you know, test marketing can be on, you know, at a, at a Starbucks, you can approach people that are sitting around. That's what I did sometimes on the street, literally. You can go to, uh, you know, try selling your product at the swap meet one weekend or a day. I think anywhere you can kind of, there's all there's lots of markets and things like that. I mean, I think it's good to test market it and just see what people's reaction is. Because right there, you'll get some of the objections, you'll get some of the concerns of people, and then you can kind of um, imagine that those will be the same concerns on Kickstarter. Oh. That right? makes sense, yes. Of yeah. So, um, so anyway, that and I think those kind of things are, you know, and again, it, it, it's kind of a product-by-product product basis. I mean, everybody's got different type of product and a different type of, you know, Kickstarter, like we said, has movies and documentaries and plays, and so there's just a lot of different things that are going on, and I guess they all have to be approached differently, right? Right, right, of course, but there are a lot of wonderful examples on Kickstarter that you can, like you did, you just looked at, at the ones that were successful and started picking out, you know, patterns. Yeah, I think that, that some of them have, you know, things in common, although it's, it's fun to see that there are unique features. Some people, you know, are successful with one approach and somebody else is successful with another. Originality, I think, plays in there, too. It's just, sometimes it's it's, uh, you, you want to, I, I had certain ideas I, I thought that might be kind of fun, but I just thought, I don't know if I can take that kind of risk with a Kickstarter video and, you know, be overly original or just too over here to the left because people might react to it strangely or not. You know what I mean? You have uh-huh. to kind of stay within, a certain, I think, guidelines almost, and you want to be s- straightforward to a certain extent because you're really, you know, you're, you need the money. You're trying to raise money for your production run, and you really want people to understand it. And you're playing to a broad audience, right? Yes. You know, you're not playing, uh, it's not like the movie business where, you know, over here at this theater, this indie theater, uh, you're going to show this, um, you know, quirky little movie, indie movie that only appeals to a, a select audience, and you're going to market to them. Kickstarter, you know, I mean, that might work for certain applications, but for this particular product, for a belt, it really, you know, its market is men, right? It has a broad appeal. Right. So I have to try to talk to mo- you know all men or most men. Uh, luckily, also Kickstarter is very men. Um, it's been populated by mostly men over over women. You know, mm-hmm. I don't know if you knew, if if you knew that, but mostly you know, there's a lot of men on Kickstarter as opposed to a lot of other sites where things are available for sale where it's mostly women. Yeah, so that I mean the out. backers and the people launching projects. I mean, you can really start to see that mostly it is is male. Dominated. Yeah, it's skewed towards men more, which is somewhat unusual because usually on the internet, when there's things for sale or to buy, it tends to be more women. You know, <laughs> so for me, it was good. I am getting emails from women asking for, uh, you know, the men's obviously for the women's styles, and, and those are coming soon. So mm. yeah. amazing. Now, if people want to. Um, we will have all the links on the website because there's a number of things we're talking about. One is the, um, you know, trackline.com, the Kickstarter campaign, which you, there's still a couple couple days if people want, if our listeners want to get involved. Um, there's also the standardstyle.com. And then um, if you launch on Indiegogo, that will be in the next month or so? Uh, in the next month, yeah. It might be sooner, but, you know, sometime in the next month we're, we're kind of doing it some things with the video that are a little different, obviously, and we're trying to do some different things with the campaign. Okay. Um, but it'll look similar, and that'll be on uh, the next month at Indiegogo. Okay. But, yeah, you can see it's a track line, www.track, and track is spelled T-R-A-K-L-I-N-E, track line in this case, dot com. Wonderful. And what's the best way if people wanted to connect with you to get a hold of you? Uh, they could just email us at, uh, uh, let's see, the standard info at gmail.com. The okay. standard info, I-N-F-O, at gmail.com. Okay. And for all this... con- Go ahead. Yeah, there's a contact form, too, at the standardstyle.com. There is a contact page. They can email us there, too. Okay. Wonderful. 
Perfect. Well, um, for our listeners, we will make sure to have all of those details. Carl's has, has a lot of incredible insights. Um, and for the Indiegogo project, we will be sure to connect with Carl. And if, if we can, um, if when they launch that, we can put that on our website and, um, let you know where to go if you want to be part of that project, but definitely, um, check out the Kickstarter project right now. You have a, a couple more days to get in there. Um, but Carl, thank you for joining us today and sharing all of your, your really cool insights and stories. Well, Hey, thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. It's been fun. It's been very fun to our audience. Thank you for listening. Now get out there, build something beautiful until next time. Take care. <laughs>